As I continue my journey around the world in search of today's most influential leaders of our time, I realize that there's some patterns and similarities. For one, they've all turned their pain and failures into their success story, and they're obsessed with personal growth. And today, we're about to head to Dallas, Texas, to the Temple of Transformation to meet with none other than Susie Matisse. Susie has one of the most remarkable stories out of any of the entrepreneurs that we've interviewed on the show. And I mean, she's gone from literally being depressed, bankrupt, broken, I mean, completely out of rock bottom moments in her life and completely turned that around to become the founder of a company that's now worth 500 million. She is an inventor. She is a like spiritual guide and she's become one of the most impactful role models for women across the world. Susie Batiste is the founder of a company called Poo Puri. If you have not heard about this company, it has literally been around for over a decade, doing hundreds of millions, all from this idea of taking away the smell of shit. Yes, using oils, crazy, but it's become a phenomenon. I mean, this is one of the most viral marketing campaigns that I've ever seen on the internet in history. You would not believe the mother load I just dropped. And that's how I like to keep it, leaving not a trace that I was ever here, let alone that I just birthed a creamy behemoth from my cavernous bowels. Nothing is worse than stinking up the shared toilet at work, or the toilet at a party, or your lover's apartment. Of course, flushing removes the graphic evidence. Maybe two or three flushes if your skid marks are as tenacious as mine. But what can be done of that subtle scent of a... 300 cow dairy farm? Aerosol air fresheners aren't the most effective option, or the healthiest. Trying to mask the stench, giving you a nice blend of chem lab carnations with just a touch of feces. So, how do you make the world believe your poop doesn't stink? Or in fact, that you never poop at all? Poopery. Poopery is the before you go toilet spray that has proven to trap those embarrassing odors at the source and save relationships. In part one of this two-part docuseries, we're gonna dive deep into Susie's entrepreneur journey after she hit rock bottom. Also, her story of how she made the radical decision to send her son to Peru when he was facing deep depression. Also, her views on goal setting and how she implements her daily rituals for her to become the best iteration of herself. In part two, we're actually gonna get real specific on what the business lessons were for her to create a $500 million empire from just an idea without raising a single dollar of outside funding. Let's head into the Temple of Transformation to discover how Susie Batiste became one of the most impactful women of the 21st century. Yeah, so if you get some, I can tell you where to get them, but get them tuned to the 432 hertz because it's a different vibration. Whoa. 432 is the vibration of love. Yeah, and you can you can feel it. I felt it. Yeah, God, you're different. <laughs>
little bit of time, I feel like my leg. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This one. Yeah. Conscious heart. Yeah. This is my mentor. Oh, he's so high integrity. I mean, I mean, jeez. I love that. Just hearing those little pieces of advice. The kindness in the heart. I mean, the eyes. And, and the, the easiest. Yeah, you guys are beautiful. Yeah, yeah. oh, thank awesome. you. This is my little meditation room. Oh, you can. I'm getting this free. I finally found the symbol that I'm getting painted here. Um, oh, this is beautiful. Thank you. The lighting. Yeah, it changes colors all day long. Woo! And I meditate like 5 a.m., but it's really dark. Except for, doesn't it feel good? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You're woke. <laughs> Ignore me. I'm like, listen, I want to scream. <laughs> like, come yeah. on. And they're like, hey. so yeah, we had it built. But what's so fun about it is the arc of it. Like, it will rock, it'll yeah. just sway forever. Yeah. I as I walked around the Temple of Transformation with Susie, I could feel the intention, energy, and love that was put into this sacred space. It's the same place Susie spends time testing new ideas as an inventor, manages her team, who is growing both of her companies, Poopery and her newest conscious venture, Supernatural. This is my creative space. Oh, I love it. This is where, so my new businesses that I'm getting into is I'm working with quantum businesses to bring resonance products into the world. Products that literally have a vibration. Like they're, they're like, we're putting vibrations in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really fun. So you can see a lot about quantum physics. That's um, kind of so fun. Yeah, I was just in God, California. So is that one of the things them. you love most, is inventing? Really? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's like ideas. It's like, hold on, if you can put, put it into a patch. Like what else can you put this into? Can you put it into an auditorium full of people? Can you, like what can we do with all this energy? Wow. <laughs> I like that to me is a playground, you know? Yeah. What's a day in the life? Do you actually have a specific time that you come in this room or is it yeah, just when you so feel? I ride up here. So I get up in the mornings and I meditate. Well, I make a cup of tea. Tea first, then I meditate <laughs> in that order. Okay, so tea, meditate. <laughs> tea, then meditate. And then I usually write. I do some sort of writing. We experience so much in the world, we need to express more. Mm -hmm. And my mentor says there needs to be a balance between expressing and experiencing. And right now, if you think about it, just life, there's a lot of experiences we have. Yeah, and then we don't but, have the time to digest them. And, well, and to express. And express them. So we're off balance. So I like to try to express. It doesn't matter what, I'm, I'm not really writing anything other than just get it out of, mm -hmm. get out, out of me. So I usually write up here. And then I do either yoga. Do you write, or write, or type? Type. Okay. Yeah. If to me, and a lot of times I'll do voice dictation. Okay. Um, to me, like handwriting, it's just too slow. Even mm. typing is too slow. Like I, I, I'm, mm. I'm, I feel like I'm getting faster. Like, yeah. <laughs> everything's too slow. Yes, I love that. I love your energy. Thank you. <laughs> So when I was talking to agents about my book, I haven't put my book out because I mm -hmm. kept saying you're too slow. When they're like, the, what are you talking about? I think alive is shit. Al alive is shit? Alive as, as shit. shit. Okay, that's yeah, alive, as alive as shit. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. And that's what I talk about. Like if your energy level, if your aliveness was the currency that we would seek or you know, sought, mm -hmm. imagine what we would be like. You know, if like all right, energy level is what I valued the most over anything like we would make totally different choices wow so true yeah so that's what i want to talk about in the world but i kept asking agents like how can this be fast and how can it become a living dynamic organism and they're like what are you talking about and i'm like i don't know it just feels like books are slow dude. They're, so, yeah. they're dense they're slow they're like stuck i'm like how can this be a lie you need a show you need a show you need a show you think she needs a show come and let her know yeah. Yeah. We need a live as shit show. Live as shit show. The desk can make sense. You can do it. You can do it. We got a studio. We got to go. We got to get this show popping. We got to get this show popping. <laughs> yeah, but I am working. I'm working with one of the top gaming consultants in the world, and I'm working with some quantum physicists. And like, really, how can I launch this where it's alive? Yeah. It's literally a living organism that stays alive by the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, that's the reason my book's not out. It's just too damn slow. I kept hearing. I want to write a book, but a book's too slow. Me too, me too. I want to write a book, but a book's me too, too slow. But it's I've been too slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, me too. <laughs> so see, I'll create this platform and you yeah. can be on the platform. Yeah, let's and go. then what I want to do is open source the platform 
so that anybody that has an idea, right, they want to spread, can actually live within exactly. that platform. Yeah. If it's and a good enough idea, You said it's Oprah was someone you always admired. Yeah, exactly. You know? Let's just and we do had it. Mel Robbins on the show, and she's oh, doing that she's now. She's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't met Have you connected her yet. Mel? No, I'm gonna connect you. I need to. You and Mel need to connect. I just found out about her like really? I don't know, a few oh. months ago. I watched yeah. her five, four, three, two, one. I'm like, yeah. I love this woman. Oh, her energy, you're gonna love. Yeah. Mel. This is my energy. Get every light source out of here and turn the electricity off, where it has no electricity and no light. So it's kind of like a desensitization. Is that sauna? <laughs> Chamber, yeah, infrared. That's so fun. That's so beautiful. Yeah, but it's fun. It was the only room. Did you did you use it while you were here? I didn't use. Shake not from confusion, but with excitement for uncertainty. Always reach out and wonder. You are blessed eternally. You are blessed becoming. This is That's unbelievable. My son. Yeah, he's great. Wow. This was he's one, a, one Mother's a, Day. He comes to lunch. They held, like, had a lunch and he tosses this across the table. The back of it's like a blender box. But he's like, here, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. And I was like, oh, it's beautiful. But all my kids, for gifts, they either write me poems or they make me something. Because, you know, I don't need anything or want anything other than their creations in the world. So and good. they're all so artists good. and poets and writers. It's an awesome place because we can sleep, I think, like 14 in our own beds comfortably. It was amazing. And we made wood fire pizzas outside. Did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's really, um, it's a great bubble mm -hmm. like just to it's a, it's a womb it's a temple i mean it really feels like that i didn't know it was called that it really feels yeah. like a temple it's you a temple be... of transformation yeah, I love yeah that. it is okay. so it's nice just to come and you know spend a couple of days and then you can just kind of uh mm -hmm. get reborn yeah that's oh, what makes a great leader <laughs> susie Thank you so much for inviting me here to and being part of the Leaders Create Leaders community and, and um, taking a moment to really share your story. I have known about your company for quite some time and it's just unbelievable what, you, what you've done and what you've created and what you continue to create and how much you've persevered that I think a lot of people don't always know when they hear about someone's success. Yeah. And I genuinely admire you for the work that mm. you're doing in the world, how you're doing it very consciously with what you're creating and who you are, just basically the, the leader that you are for your team, for your community, mm. um, for your customers, mm. how much you care. You know, I think about conscious, in, being conscious, you know, yeah. it's that awareness, that presence, mm. and you have that about you and I've only known you for a short period of time, but me off camera, we were vibing, and yeah. I just cannot wait. One of the greatest things about this show is the relationships that we're able to build from it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so thank you on behalf of everyone watching here and myself and our team. Thank you so much for being a part of Leaders Create Leaders. Mm, you're welcome. Thank you. It's such an honor to be here. I, I loved what we were talking. We were already diving in. I know, <laughs> like, we're diving oh, in. I was like, don't tell us. We got to put this on. I'm it. like, yes, okay. like-minded guy, and high five on yes. your spiritual transformation. Yes, I did. Most people get through the end of their lives and they don't even have that. Yeah. So that says a lot about your soul, your being, like what you're up to. That tells me like you're in for the game, I call it. But mm. it's, it's a game that's bigger than the game of what we normally think about. My goal, one of my goals is to reach my highest evolution in this lifetime. Mm. Now there's not a particular marker for that, but it's like just keep evolving, keep growing consciously, right? So how can I do that? That yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, really that's it. As that. long as I'm evolving and growing, it's like whatever I'm going through, whatever struggle, as long as I'm learning and growing from that, then it's all worth it wow. because that's just my goal. And like I said, there's not an end point. I don't know what that looks like. Some people in Buddhism think it's nirvana or enlightenment. I don't have those particular goals, but I know if I can keep growing, you know, we kept talking about shedding transformation, mm, yes. like, you know, shedding the old and then coming up with the new. Like, I don't want to be the same person next week I am today. Mm. I have zero desire, yes. you know? Wow. It's like, as long as I'm growing internally and inside, like, it's good. Wow. The minute I stop, I'll be laid flat underground. Yes. What, when was that point for you? Talk, take me back to the moment where you didn't even think there would be an awakening. You, you were in that suffering yeah. state, and how did you overcome that? Gosh, well, there were a few, um, and I think you, we'll just share a little bit of my story, okay. but I grew up in Arkansas. Um, my dad was a bipolar alcoholic. My mom was depressed wow. on pain pills, and we were divorced at 10. I grew up in just a very violent household, you know? 
and I was so grateful my parents divorced. My mom met this guy, marries him, my sister and I were molested by him. So this isn't like a sad story, but this is what happens in life, right? So we go through trials. So we were both molested. I was married at 19. I was bankrupt at 20, and I was divorced at 20. So I was married, bankrupt, and divorced at 20 years old. So I tried to kill myself when I was 21. Like, I was like, forget it. Like, who wants to do this life? Like, this is horrible. This sucks. This really sucks, and I don't want to be here. So I, I was just tapping out. That didn't work. Obviously, I'm here, and uh, I, I suck at that. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, but then um, I uh, married my second husband and became pregnant with my first child, and I call him my amazing gift from God. You know, I wasn't planning on having children, and I do believe that, I, uh, me saying yes to him is what has saved my life. And that was like a bridge to keep me going through the rest of my life. Um, that was an abusive marriage that I, that I had to get out of after yeah. about four years, um, really intense. But then what I realized is I, so I married this guy who didn't have any money. I'm like, great, you have a station wagon and drums in the back of your car because my ex-husband was rich. And I'm like, nobody will ever control me with money. So then it was just struggle. It was fight, struggle, fight, struggle, let's go. Because what I believed somehow, I'm not sure if it was society or my parents, but I believed if I could make money and be successful, then I was gonna be happy. Mm. So I pushed through, clawed through, sold out. You know, I did anything for that shit. You know, I did all those deals that we do in business that seem like normal business moves, but they're so manipulative. You know, like I'll help you because I know sometime you're gonna help me. Like when you really get mm. down to that, that's pretty sleazy. You know what wow. I'm saying? It's not authentic, but it's what happens in business. So I did that, but then at 38, I had my second bankruptcy. I'd invested all of my money in a dot-com, stock market crashed, and I was done again. Like oh. I just literally, I was like, I was done. I was like, I wasn't going to kill myself because I had a family, right? But I really, literally was at the biggest state of depression that I've ever been. To have to really look at my family and tell them, I actually get emotional right now that, you know, I'd lost everything again, right? Damn. It's like everything, you know, the, ha the cars got taken away and then the house. But what the biggest thing that happened was I got to see that I wasn't just financially bankrupt, I was spiritually bankrupt. Like I literally didn't have anything. Like I didn't even have God to hang on to because I'd wow. abandoned him years ago, right? So um, I went into a really deep depression. I put earphones on and played disturbed and just painted in my house and I just got anger. I was this angry man, just Wah! screaming rage. rage and I finally sat down in my living room and I screamed to God one day and I said you know what like just take me because I'm done wow. I'm not gonna live that way anymore the next day I had a book that I was at a bookstore and I see this book and it was Byron Katie and it said loving what is and I'm like yeah right yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. do you know the shithole I'm in like yeah I can't love this of course devoured the book. Two weeks later, I'm at her, you know, workshop. And 10 days later, I came out free. Wow. Yeah. And, and so I became, I kind of went on a spiritual sabbatical. I had a small business doing interior design. But what I realized is it wasn't money I was looking for. I was thinking money was the vehicle to my happiness. Right. So, so if I could get money. That all taken away from you, like, that's it. It's all, like, again, like, I, there's, I'm not worth anything. I'm not worth anything. Because your worth was attached to the amount of yeah. money you were able to make. And, and, yes, yeah. that's when I was gonna be happy and peaceful. Right. And instead, I found peace and happiness within myself. Yes. And I was like, I don't even want money. Like I had zero desire yeah. to have any money. It's like, I was it's so like a, It became like a drug almost. It's like, you don't need that. I didn't need it anymore. It's like, I am, was so content and so happy. And, and that's remained. I still have that level of contentment. Mm -hmm. And I tell people often, I had the luxury of losing everything. And when we talk about trial, so yes, on one hand it was a trial, but the other hand is most people don't get the luxury of that clean slate. And I got the luxury of having everything stripped away so then I could just see like, wow, how do I want to rebuild this? Like literally, I knew I was not going to rebuild it the way I did in the past. 
So things have to be done completely different. What have, how, how has that practice made a shift in your consciousness for you, for your family, for your, for your business? And mm. can you talk me through like what an experience has been like for you? Yeah, I've had a lot of them. Um, so originally, and I was sharing with you a little bit earlier that I didn't even know what ayahuasca was. And my son was 19, and this was 12 years ago. So it was right when I started Poopery. Oh. And uh, my son was in a dark place. And I heard this voice. And it was a proverbial voice of like God or something. You know, I don't know. But it said ayahuasca and Dustin. And it was very profound. Wow. And I didn't even know what it was. So I get to work and I type in A W ayahuasca. You heard this weird. Yeah, like I dream? heard this weird world. It was just, I just woke up and heard it. And I was wow. like, okay, I need to find out what this is. So I Google and I find this article that said to Helen back, it was National Geographic, about this person that went down to the jungle and they were depressed and it radically changed their life. And I sent it to my son and I said, I think you might need to go read this article. And he said, mom, I need to go. So I booked him, this was on a Wednesday, I booked him on a trip for two, two weeks later, they had a trip. You know, I called the, the, the center down in um, Iquitos and. I said, you know, my son, and here's the deal. And they said, okay, great, we have a trip in two or three weeks. He wakes up on Friday morning, and he's like, Mom, I need to go now. Whoa. So I call the camp, and I'm like, he's got to come now. Is there a way he can come? Did you have any fear of, like, is it safe? or like? Never thought about it. Again, when you hear that voice, like, like oh. if you've ever heard something like that, like, I'm not crazy. It was literally like, okay, like, I was following a directive, okay? okay? So I never even thought about it being safe. I just read the article, it helped the person. It was National Geographic. It's gotta be legit to some point, mm -hmm. right? Because the reporter had gone down. Right. And um, so on Friday morning, he says, Mom, I need to go now. Saturday, he's on a plane to Peru. And he was down in the jungle for 10 days, no Wi-Fi, no cell phone. So my 19-year-old son, I send to Peru, down to work with shamans in the middle of the Amazon jungle. Wow. And people now go, did you even That's think about that? Mom. I didn't even think about it. I was like, yeah, like he had a yes, like go, honey, go, go. Mm. Yeah, like go find yourself, right? Yeah, yeah it's really, cause that's what it is. That's so so beautiful. 10 days Sweet. later, he calls me from Aikido's and I'll never forget, I'm sitting at Poopuri and he says, mom, God is real and he's <sighs> bawling. And I was like, what is this? So we just cried on the yeah, phone yeah, and it was a 180 for him in his life. Like it was literally like, it's like he got a breath of fresh air, you know, like he could breathe. So yeah. he comes home and I start interviewing him. Like I would a guru that had, you know, reached enlightenment. Like, tell me about, tell me about this. Now yeah. I need to know. <laughs> yeah. I sent you down yeah. there blindly, yeah. but now I need to know. So then I started going down and then our whole family yeah. started journeying with the medicine. And we've, um, you know, I've personally journeyed uh, almost a hundred times, but over 12 years. Wow. Um, but the reason my first 35 ceremonies were hellacious. I'm talking, I got my ass handed to me, but you heard my life. So I had a lot of shit to clean Ooh, up, a lot wow, of guilt and so shame much. to go through yeah. and fear. Yeah. Like my husband at the time kept looking at me going, why do you keep doing this? It's because each time I felt tripping. like I got a little of myself back. It's like, okay, each time. So I kept going through those hellacious ceremonies because I was determined at some point, I started tasting something like, I, I feel me, I'm feeling me, and I wanna continue to feel. I wanna feel me, so I wanna take away anything that's blocking me from actually feeling. And um, yeah, so our family, it's made the biggest impact of my life of probably anything. The medicine, I actually thought I wanted to be a shaman. Um, I went down to Peru on one trip and I told the, the shaman, I said, I, I don't know what I'm doing in business. Like, this is crazy. Like, I need to be a shaman. And he said, he taught me something really amazing. He said, shamans move energy, right? Mm -hmm. They pour the medicine, but then they're just moving out what's bad, putting in something good. He said, they move energy. And he said, money is energy. And business is the biggest... Yeah catalyst for moving energy or yeah. money through the world and he said you're going to do a lot more in the world in business than you are down here pouring ayahuasca to 20 people at a time wow that's yeah powerful. it is so that's why when i'm telling you and i'm talking to you about alignment mm -hmm. i feel i'm a shaman 
Yeah. I feel the medicine's still working in me, mm -hmm. and I'm also looking for that alignment within well, my that, organization, right. within others. Right, because you can be doing that. I've actually been able to tap in without having to take yeah. any medicine. No. You know, it's within us. Because you are the medicine. You are, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we all have yeah. DMT in our bodies, right. right? Yeah, and it's merely awakening a mm -hmm. part of us that we've forgotten. Woo, so, you're a goddess, yeah. girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hi guys, so thank you for watching part one. Now please make sure that you are subscribed. Notifications are on because in part two, we're not gonna just dive into her story and the daily rituals and the inspiration, but we're gonna start getting into the business. For all of you entrepreneurs, for those that wanna start a business, or for those of you that have a business but wanna learn, how did she go from just an idea to nine figures, hundreds of millions of dollars worth 500 million. So we're gonna get specific on the business lessons of how she did it. So stay tuned, subscribe, share this with your friends, and please comment and let us know what you love about this show, Leaders Create Leaders. Thank you for watching. It's your host, Gerard Adams.